four dating trends that have been identified in a rather large survey, and one of which in particular was absolutely shocking. <laughs> so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. I want to welcome back Joni Caldwell Learner, the motivational coach and podcast host. We'll talk about your new upcoming podcast in a little bit. Joni, thanks for being here again. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. I always have fun. Well, let, let, let's have some fun today because it's uh, definitely a fun topic that uh, I run across here. The headline, you know, dating trends always catches my attention. And these are four dating trends, 2023 dating trends that have been identified in a rather large survey, again, among, among the major sites. And one, well, one of which in particular was absolutely shocking. <laughs> but let's go through the first three that, that uh, are interesting, didn't quite blow me away, but interesting. Resolution dating, I like the way they, they put that. It says here that 57% of respondents ended a relationship or pulled back if they're at the personal goals and values of the person they were uh, you know dating didn't match that if the partner's behaviors got in the way of them reaching their own goals oh wow those that feels like a couple of of different points because mm -hmm. when you say values you know how i feel about that we mm -hmm. we when we live by our values we are way more likely to be successful and happy and we have to figure out what are our values. And then if the values are not aligned, if it, let's say I come in and, and kindness toward people is really important to me and this person is mean to people, that's really not aligned. It, it's a huge red flag. Mm -hmm. So the values really do need to be aligned. And it's interesting because maybe we're talking about people in their 50s, they're still working, they still have um, goals that they want to achieve, uh, in terms of uh, career and that kind of thing. Not that 60s and 70s, you know, people aren't doing that, but I'm running into a lot of people in their 60s that are, you know, very happily retired. So goals then in that category, it would be, do they want to travel? Do they, do they like Netflix? Do they, you know, want to sit in the hot tub with me every night? I mean, it's, <laughs> so it is actually really important because if this is your person, if you find a person and you want this to be your person, and you're going to spend the next uh, 10, 20, 30 years, you want to be aligned in how you want to live your life. Yeah. And I, I, think, I think according to these respondents, you don't want to feel like you were held back from getting there. And I think a lot of these obviously were more younger people, maybe than even us. But I think I thought that was interesting. Quick one here, budget dating. I think they call it inflation dating on another segment we did. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. well... It says you're to expect more monogamy, but not for the reasons you think, that over 61% of singles prefer dating one person at a time because, you know, it's to save money. It's cheaper. <laughs> Now, if that has a, a budget, good, I only get to date you. Yeah, if, um, <laughs> if that has a good influence on maybe taking it slower or focusing on one person, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm being silly right now because you know me. I just I like to laugh, but um, budget dating is a thing. Inflation dating, and yeah, it's it's really smart to be smart about money at any time. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And if it leads to monogamy, even all the better. Yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting point that they related that. Yeah. The, uh, well, here's another one that I, that I like. I know people have different opinions about this, but that especially after COVID and, you know, being on the internet so much is that long distance relationships, LDRs at, as uh, they're called, that they are way on the rise. So expect long distance dating to be a lot more commonplace. What do you think about that? I think they're probably quite correct. I love all these acronyms. So some people are very satisfied with an emotional or intellectual connection over Zoom or in conversation and then meeting up every now and then. If that's if that works for them, awesome. If they're one of their five love languages or their primary love language is touch, that's going to be a problem, right? So it's really about, you know, the, it, does it um, mesh? Does it work for both people? And then are you able to take trips together? Or in other words, there's a hybrid 
uh, dating coming on. Yeah, I, I think especially at this time when we hopefully are a little bit more flexible, not all of us are, I, I totally get that, but there's a lot of retirement in our demographic. You know, why not be open to, if you really like somebody who lives across the country, there's there's ways to get together that you can even move <laughs> if it comes to that. But maybe, you know, if you're really having fun talking with someone, you know, don't just shut that off. I, I, I think I'm all for it. I, I think it's good. Now here, yeah. the last one, Joni, <laughs> this is the shocking one. I, I just, I don't know how I feel about this. Or I, well, I thought I knew how I felt, but, but the more I think about it, I don't know. Virtual relationships. That 33, and I'll read this, uh, of respondents said they planned on using the metaverse in 2023. <laughs> 33 or 33%? 33%. Ah. So one third of all people. Now I'm, I'm going to assume that these are younger people. And I, and I don't even know if this will ever apply to us, but how this is growing to me mm -hmm. is shocking because all the major dating sites are developing this. Do you know, mm -hmm. do you, do you know about the metaverse? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Of course, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so what you said was virtual relationships um, which I think would be ver different from virtual dating. So if you're if you're only having a virtual relationship in the VR world, to me that's a little um, uh, I will kindly say out of balance. Okay, let me clarify that because it is about dating. That that there okay. are people. They said that lots of people are having, and these are younger people. Uh, mm -hmm. By, by and large, ha having virtual relationships, but that the dating sites like the Match Group, like Tinder, like Bumble, they've all caught on that this can be applied to meeting people and then yeah. eventually going, uh, you know, in IRL <laughs> in right. real life, that this could be a way even to take out some of the stumbling blocks, you know, of people who are shy, people who have trouble socializing, et cetera. You're literally, you're hidden behind an avatar you can go on dates with this other avatar that somebody else created get to know this person without ever seeing them or actually speaking with them i believe i there might be you know some uh, differences there so it's an it's a variation on on a technological theme over the last many years right mm -hmm. so you could be in a virtual relationship uh, through text and through email and never meet the person, never see the person. I don't think that's healthy either. Mm -hmm. So, so let me just say, so what they do is they meet, uh, on the, the, uh, dating sites mm -hmm. and, and if they match, they feel like, and they decide together to go into a place where they could, it's just them and they could go on a date or what have you. I, I think it's a fascinating concept, to be honest with you. I happen to have a VR set because I love Oculus. And I also now live in a place that has four seasons. So if I want to get cardio, I I am a, like a Jedi Knight. I'm I, and I'm, it's all this music and lights and the thing and it's exciting and it's I mean, it's really fun. But I don't live there. You know, there are some people in virtual reality where they'll sit there for they'll forget to eat, they'll forget to drink. These are the younger the younger people. Now to answer your question, I haven't dated this way, but I would try it. I would actually try it not as a substitution. Mm -hmm. So I would want to, I would want to talk to the person and, and we've talked about the evolution of online dating. So you connect, then you're texting on the thing and then you, and, and the emails, and then you see each other. And let's say it's a long distance. If it's not long distance, you meet up for coffee mm -hmm. and then you meet up for dinner. So there's a progression that happens and then you if you decide if you both have a vr set hey let's go on a you know hiking date let's go on because you can get to as you're saying mm -hmm. maybe some people are um shy or maybe they are long distance relationships or maybe it just sounds fun so as a um complement to the dating process i think it sounds pretty cool now the metaverse like this if i could get rid of all technology completely i would <laughs> That's how I actually feel, but I don't, I live in a world it's 2023. Like how weird is that already? And then, and everything is moving very quickly and I can either be like, Oh, what did you say earlier? You said, get that cat off my lawn. I can be that. Or I can go, Oh, this is interesting. 
I'll give it a shot. It's well, I, you know, again, when I first read it, it says, oh, you got to be kidding. You know, what's this world coming to? And I did, oh, I'm that old person. And then the more I think about it, I mean, this isn't going away. It's, it's right. kind of like, you know, people who hate online dating, I'm never going to do it. Well, yeah, there's there's ways to work with it to where it, it is good. You just have to adapt to it. And I really think this is something that maybe our age group won't have to, but certainly our kids or and their kids, they're going to be doing this. And one of the benefits that they mentioned is like the metaverse, like social anxiety, geographical restrictions, like the hiccups of uh, traditional dating kind of go out the window. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, in all seriousness, we were just talking about an article the other day about young men are not in relationship. Like there's a huge mm -hmm. percentage of young men who are not in relationship, not getting married. Why is that? Well, women are changing. They don't need the financial part of it. Maybe that's it. Or maybe it's the technological part where they are just, you know, in this world. So I cannot stress enough. Am I adventurous? And would I try it? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty cool. But there has got to be balance. You yeah. cannot live in that world. It has to be about true human connection. That's right. the only thing that matters. One of the things, one of the, like I said, the benefits they they do say is that or, the, or that they're throwing out there because their their sites operating right now. That's I think mm -hmm. Never Met uh, is one of the big ones. There's Planet Theta. There's Flirtatious. I think those are the three big ones. They're operating. People are dating on those sites and then eventually getting to or not getting together. You know, in real life. I would love to hear from our viewers what they think about this because again, one of the benefits, as I was starting to say, is that you're meeting a personality mm -hmm. you're not being you know it's not photos and that's one of the big complaints right now with dating sites that you know it's just pictures everything if you don't like the picture you go right by there that this does present a different way i, I again i'm not sure how i feel about that I, I look forward to the comments yeah and i would also you know maybe a segment down the road when we when this is more fleshed out and mm -hmm. uh, you know and and more um utilized like what are the the red flags about it because online dating it has red flags so it, i would say if anybody tries just be really protective of your information and you know kind of investigate first well, you brought up the point and it, identity and trust is, mm -hmm. is absolutely that that's another it, it, just like, you know, dating sites right now, the scammers, they will be scammers in, in a metaverse as well. And then, um, you know, harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's very much a, a, a younger thing. I think I don't know if older people, maybe they do. But I know harassment period online is just horrible for the younger generations. Yeah, my avatar would probably punch him in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, dating in the metaverse, I interest, it, interesting concept. I, yeah. it, it, you know, it's definitely not, uh, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's two zingers today for you. The cat lady and the, and the Kansas. I love well, it. You're funny. I really do want to keep my mind open. I, you know, it, I'm never going to change that. You have to, in order to have a relationship, you, you have to be in person. Uh, I, I think that, I don't know. I think maybe that might be changing that the whole thing, but actually being a person might, you know, who knows what, what's going to be like in 50 years. I'll let you close. Maybe something more positive. <laughs> <laughs> There's an old saying contempt prior to investigation. So I, I want you to think about that. Are you not dating because you have contempt prior to investigation and, or are you not online dating for the same reason? And then the metaverse for the same reason, <gasps> If you have contempt after you've tried it and given it a real honest shot, then so be it. But but don't close yourself off from living a full life because you're up in your head and you've decided things are a certain way. Be open. Be 1% open. One like tiny percent open. Okay, I'm done. I, and I can't, I can't agree with you more. <laughs> so thank you, Joni. We, uh, interesting topic. I thought, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's the trends are shifting. So we will link to all of your information as usual, your new podcast that's coming up, wake up with Joni. I'll put a graphic uh, up for it. Looking forward to that. And we will see you on our next segment of second act TV. See you then. Mm -hmm.